challenges for Indonesia's healthcare are vast, covering more than 17,000 islands and over 230 million people. And despite recent healthcare reforms, maternal and infant mortality here is still among the highest in Southeast Asia. And virulent diseases like malaria, typhoid and dengue fever are common across the country. I'm Fauzia Ibrahim. In this edition of 101 East, we take the pulse of Indonesia's healthcare system. In the past, Indonesia's governments have spent only 1% of the nation's GDP on health care. In recent years, that budget has increased significantly to help the poor gain access to medical treatment. But as Howell Davis reports, many Indonesians are still falling through the gaps. It's a system that's won plaudits for its ambitious plans driven by a minister who's won international praise. Overall, I think I'll definitely rank uh, the Honorable Health Minister's efforts as uh, one of the best ones. Definitely in the developing countries. Indonesia's health system has been held up as a model for others to follow, particularly its health insurance scheme aimed at the poor. Under it, producing a card like this should mean free treatment. But just five years after they were launched, the whole system is struggling with inefficiency, corruption and inequality. The World Bank says it forces over two million people a year into what it terms catastrophic poverty due to medical expenses. Sometimes we can't buy medicine because we couldn't afford it. We have to sell things from our house. Sometimes if I don't have enough money, I'll borrow cash from my neighbours. This is Samsuri Sianto's daughter, Tiffany. She suffers from a blood disorder and gets treatment at this clinic in the city's central hospital. Despite having the card, her family still has to hand over money it can ill afford. They say everything is free under the health insurance plan. But in reality, we have to buy medicines and other medical items using our own money. Even the hospital's administration fee, I have to pay for it. There is no such thing as totally free medical care because you have to pay for many things. At the heart of the problem is years of chronic underfunding. Indonesia spends just 2.1% of gross domestic product on health care. Thailand spends 3.5%, while Malaysia spends double, 4.2%. But it's not just a question of funding. Those who should be doing their best for their patients are also part of the problem. There are three main types of drugs sold in Indonesia. Patented drugs. These are largely made by multinationals and they're sold at international prices. Generic drugs. Cheap medicines whose patents have run out. And branded generics. These are often just the same as generics but with an impressive label. And it's these that many Indonesian doctors try and push on their patients because they get kickbacks from drug companies. They always say to their patients, do you want to get better or to die quickly? If you want to heal, you'd better take this expensive drug, which they claim is patented. But it's only the label of a patent drug, not the contents. Based on our investigation, on average, these branded ones can be between 40 to 200 times more expensive than the price of generic drugs set by the government. It's not the only problem with the drugs industry here. This is one of Jakarta's largest medicine markets with dozens of small chemist shops. Many have signs saying they have a qualified pharmacist from the Ministry of Health working here. But as a former head of the Doctors' Association here explains, that's a sham. In reality, the pharmacists come here simply to collect their fee for having their name up on the shop. They have this pharmacist here, but uh, it's just the name. So it's just come to take money. And just one hour or two hours here and then... Every month. The intention, I think, is not to supervise and to ensure that the people will get uh, Proper medicine, good quality means to know. I don't think so. And with such loose oversight, many of the drugs sold here are fake. 
Cartono says he thinks about 30 percent. He sees this as part of a wider failure by the government to plan for future health needs. There is no strategic plan from the Department of Health on what are they going to achieve within, say, uh, 20 years from now uh, on the health of the people. Uh, I mean that uh, vision, there is no vision. That's not a view accepted by the health minister. She came to international prominence last year, publishing a book accusing the United States and the World Health Organization of aiming to profit from bird flu samples taken in Indonesia. Indonesia itu hanya reaktif, bukan satu action, tapi reaction. There is Indonesia only reacts to unethical behavior of others. We have sent the samples for research, and then people are making money out of it. That's what I call unethical. She's also called on drugs companies to open factories here or face expulsion. That policy is now being reviewed. But while such statements may cause international headlines, it's less obvious that they do much to benefit the patients at Indonesia's hospitals who, unless the government moves to make health a higher priority, face more years of underfunding and neglect. Joining us now for a checkup on Indonesia's health system, we are joined by Dr. Fami Idris, head of Indonesia's Medical Association, Dr. Kartono Muhammad, member of the Executive Board of Coalition for Healthy Indonesia 2010, and Dr. Hasbullah Tabrani, public health Professor from the University of Indonesia. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Fami, if I can start with you first, they always say that the country's best resources are its people. Isn't health a priority for the Indonesian government? Yes, we know uh, the, in general, we have to talk about our, our, our state budgets are not so, so high, you know, we have the developing countries. Uh, but the, the government, uh, have the goodwill to increase the, the, the health budgets, especially. I, I don't agree with that opinion. Uh, actually, the increase is uh, not substantial in, in terms of uh, percentage to the, to the overall budget and also to the increase of the population. And so the, the increase in, in quantities actually uh, almost nothing. Hasbulla, yes, how does Indonesia's import. health sector compare to other countries in the same socio-economic level in this region? Well, our health system in Indonesia has been chronically ill. Since the last three decades, our uh, spending for health care is only less than 3%. Even the government budget in the last three decades never achieved reach more than 3%, the government budget for the health, uh, for the Ministry of Health, for example. So it has been chronically ill. It's, yes, uh, it is not the only uh, problem with the budget, but the budget, the funding is the main source of the, the problems. And in addition to that, the government does not protect the interest of the public. Uh, for example, the cost of medical care in public hospital in Jakarta, in one of public hospitals in Jakarta, is about two to three times more expensive than the cost of medical care in private hospital in Penang, for example. How can it can be like that? So there is no good protection. We'll take a short break now, but when we come back, we'll hear from a family that's struggling to afford medical care. Stay with us.